as you can see, the set is finished. <laughs> take a look at what this set has to offer. Uh, it doesn't look like there's very much happening back here, but actually don't be fooled. There's really an awful lot that's going on on what looks like just sort of an empty stage. So we're going to take a backstage tour of Iolanthe. So come on! Okay, so it looks like just a bare empty stage. Not much is out. <laughs> uh, a long time ago, I saw a video done of Iolanthe uh, and it was the Stratford Festival in Canada. And it was a 1980s video. And they had this cool production where they were bringing out boxes and they were unfolding scenery from boxes. And I fell in love with that idea. So I have to give a big shout out to the Stratford Festival and this Canadian uh, theater festival uh, and this 1980s production that we thought we would try and mimic what they did here too. So we actually have a lot of stuff that folds out onto this blank stage and I'm gonna show you how we did that stuff. Okay, so we've got footlights here uh, and our footlights are just made out of, of PVC. Uh, we've got some PVC pipe that you cut at an angle uh, and we've got our light bulbs in here, just normal standard Edison light bulbs and then uh, we paint the insides white uh, so that it reflects and then the backside is just you know painted gold or copper or something like that this has worked for us for many productions and then the floor treatment here is uh, basically you paint the stage black and then you just dry brush boards on here uh, we have our whole stage floor covered in masonite uh, and so we want it to look like boards because we're trying to mimic a theater production. So we want the boards of the stage to be readily visible. Best thing for us is to actually paint them on. They look more theatrical that way too. And then from the audience's standpoint, they pop a little bit more than even real boards do because you've got black underneath. So for this particular thing, I'll just give you a, a good shot of that. Uh, base coat black and then I take uh, like three different colors of brown and tan uh, and just do a linear scumble with my big giant straight edge uh, until I've got the floor covered. What also sort of makes it pop out is that we don't go all the way to the edges. Uh, we do keep some of the black floor uh, in place. Uh, in this particular production, too, we don't have a big giant theater uh, and we do have a pit orchestra. And so we've got two grand pianos here and the pit orchestra is all in the stage right wing. We want them to be seen so they are, they are completely visible to the audience. Uh, when the audience is watching the show, they can see the pit orchestra behind me here. And then we've built these interesting platforms up on the tops. We're trying to mimic wings of a theater so the audience can see this stuff. So we've got it loaded with props. We've got a torch here. We've got some fabric, uh, rope designs. And then of course you got, you know, a costume on a mannequin here, you know, maybe a pot and a bucket. And then up here we've got weapons up top and this, you know, cut out uh, scenery that we've used before. So the, the great thing about this set is we can pull stuff out of our prop storage that has never gone on stage for a long time. When the audience enters the, uh, uh, the, the, the theater, they get to see this box sort of front and center. What's inside this box is a, basically uh, an Acadian forest. We take off the lids. I'll show you, I'll, I'll unpack everything. Okay, so this is kind of fun because all of this scenery packs out of that one single box. And that's a fun thing for the audience then too. And so inside the box, what is there? Well, there's, uh, there's these rocks uh, and I'll show you a little bit about these things. There's fabric that kind of goes under the bridge. There's a bridge, of course. Uh, and uh, the lids to the, to the box actually have uh, cattails and grasses that unfold from it. But uh, 
This is all from that Canadian video. I just, uh, I loved it so much uh, that, so this is really a big homage to that whole concept. So then, anyway, this is what's in the big box. That box over there also gets packed in act, two, unpacked in act two, and that is uh, Big Ben. So for this show, we also had a big backdrop. Now this is a backdrop that I painted many years ago, and here I am just spattering hot water on it to get all the wrinkles out. We don't really have a great way to fly in a backdrop, so we've gotten really good at rolling a backdrop up. But we have to tie it to the batten, and here I am just letting it hang to dry. So with everything put together, here is the fold-out sequence for Act 1. You gotta love it when audience members clap for your scene change. Okay, then in Act 2, we go to London. London has to look fun and cartoony too. Uh, these units get turned around, so what do we have here? These are basically just uh, fences outside of Big Ben. Um, and they are just... Uh, they look like this, and they're, they're wood, you know, I mean, it's a, uh, we want the fence to kind of look like it's a, uh, I don't know, an old verdigreed, greened up, iron sort of look. What I do like about these is that it's forced perspective, you know, you go, you go to the front, and they're painted in such a way that it looks like you're seeing things in, from, you know, a perspective, like it's diminishing, here's the close one, there's the front. But it's just, again, a Luan. Uh, and we just paint it to look 3D, but it's just, it's just flat blue on. And there's one on this side too. So we, we flank the box. So what's in the box? Okay, this is one of the cool things. Again, a uh, big idea from the uh, Stratford Festival in Canada. And this is Big Ben. It's a two-sided box. It only has uh, box features on the sides that we want the audience to see. And then on the back is Big Ben. And this is uh, one of the sides you see. There's only really three sides that you'll see of Big Ben. But this whole thing unpacks. And uh, I'll quick show you how it looks like unpacked. I'll try and do this by myself. And in order to mask that noise, we have another stagehand uh, over here doing the, uh, the uh, cranky crank. So the whole thing is supposed to look like it's being operated from a tiny little crank handle on the side of Big Ben. It's supposed to be funny, it's supposed to be cartoony. Okay, so now Big Ben looks way more complete. It's got the, the, the tippy top tower, uh, the clock moves up and down, you can see the roof above the clock. and. Uh, and it's already now like two and a half feet taller than the box that it came in. Uh, and so it's fun for the audience to sort of see how this thing all unfolds. The whole play sort of plays like a pop-up book. Um, but there's still more to show you. Okay, so essentially in here what we've done is we've created uh, sort of a, a guard box. Uh, and this whole thing is loaded <laughs> with people uh, so there is actually way up here in the in the uh, top portion sort of the attic we have a fairy we have an actress who's up there uh, and then we have a fairy who is in the front portion it's now hidden behind here we've actually got a sliding trap door and inside there we've got two more people so private Willis is here and we've got another fairy who's here so remember there's still three people in the box but the audience think the box is empty so let's take a, a look in here there's not a lot of space it's pretty small 
and you can't be claustrophobic if you're doing this because uh, it's tight. Okay, so that thing shuts and then uh, they open the doors again and magically Private Lewis appears, Private, Private Willis appears, and then he uh, comes out and gets brought back into here. And then they shut the doors and they open the doors again and then Private Willis is gone. That means that he quick just jumped into there. Now while that's happening, somehow the fairy who is on the inside here has to switch places with Private Willis. They have to do this so fast. I mean, this is what you practice, right? You want a magic trick to look like magic. If you want a magic trick to work, you gotta practice and practice and practice. And so, and so now <laughs> the audience sees an empty box again. These doors are shut. And then they do like a quick dance move, just enough time for uh, Private Willis to come out from the trap door again. So he is now suddenly in the box again. And by this time, the audience, ideally, is like, Whoa, what just happened? And then they shut the doors again. Okay, so these red doors get shut again. And then you hear some screaming from inside the box. They open up the box. And then there's feet kicking again. They're, they're, they're just kicking up the top. Again, a big thank you to the Stratford version for this inspiration. It, it was just fun. So for this show, we were able to design some specialty props as well. And this was sort of a fun one that I'm about to show you because this is a instant synergy between scenery, which is kind of my area, and also costumes. So what we've got here is the Fairy Queen dress rig. And what this is, is a cart. The whole thing is push honorable. <laughs> and it looks like this. Uh, and so the Fairy Queen is in here. We thought it'd be really fun if, the, the, and, and this is so great because our customer made the bodice for the Fairy Queen out of this very same cool green and black fabric. It's a nice fabric because it also can mask some of the inner workings. So I had to weld basically a stand in here uh, and uh, create basically what looks like a dress shape out of steel and then put it on casters uh, on a little round platform that we have, there we go, like that. Uh, so this is basically just a, a round platform that uh, has casters on the bottom of it. But what's fun is she walks out of the dress. So the dress just stays there on, on stage and uh, so and that's a big surprise to the audience. It's even a fun thing because during curtain call, she comes on w with this dress rig and then um, her her pusher, the person who's back here pushing the handle, leaves the stage too, and so she's stuck on there, and so she has to exit the dress in order to get off stage. So it's always fun to have bits like this. This is just a hook and an eye, and this whole thing swings open like so, and now she can walk out of the dress and it's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, and again, too, it's fun in theater to make stuff that you've never seen. I've never seen a rig like this. I've never seen uh, anybody have a push on dress. Uh, so just interesting cart. Our director, Ann Fredrickson, said, is there some way she could be pushed on? Um, and then the whole collaborative thing happened where we're starting to say, well, what if it were a dress, you know? And what if, uh, what if she can walk out of the dress and the dress stays there? And our costumer, Emily Kimball, expertly made a really fun costume that goes along with this weird dress rig. So, um, love it. This is the stuff that makes my job fun. <laughs> So years ago, I built a trap door for our stage, and uh, this is it. This is the trap door rig. Uh, it is uh, counterweighted so that it can be, sorry, it's kind of a mess over where 
over here. Uh, but uh, it's it's got a, a whole counterweight system, so we can actually load an actor onto this thing, and this whole thing descends down into a staircase. So we can load an actor, in this case, Iolanthe, uh, onto the stairs and rise them up. We can make them just sort of basically appear from the stage. In this particular show, we didn't want to give the whole store away. We wanted Iolanthe to look like she's emerging from a swamp, so we basically have her coming up uh, between uh, layers of watery looking fabric. But again, too, we're not making any bones about uh, that we're actually using some of the stage technology to help tell the story. So there is a moment where Phyllis has to look at herself in the mirror, and what happens is a mirror pops up out of the stage, and so we've got this tiny little trapdoor. It's basically the size of a hand, just like that. And you can sort of see now we're looking out the trapdoor. So some act, uh, an actor, a stage hand, has to basically put the mirror up through the hole, and then mirror, uh, and then and then Phyllis looks at herself in the mirror with this hand holding the mirror. So it's a fun bit, and then that person closes the trap door like that. I just love goofball bits like that. So uh, kudos to our director Anne for being able to utilize our stage technology. I love it when that happens. So full disclosure, two weeks ago I was working here uh, prepping the trap door and I was uh, putting counterweights on the counterweight system and then I ran into this and I had staples put in my head because I hit it hard. But anyway, back to normal, got the staples out uh, two days ago and I'm A-OK. -okay. So weirdly, sets like this are kind of hard to work on uh, because you, you have to take careful notes about what needs to get done because if you have the box out with the forest, you have to remember, oh yeah, I gotta put grass in there or I have to fix that rock. Um, because once you fold it up and it's out of out of the way, it's like out of sight, out of mind. So, and then a lot of people will walk into the theater and they'll see a set like this. And when this whole, st I mean, London's out now, but when you have a big empty stage, they kind of go, wow, is there even a set for this show? So it's deceptive. But it's very rewarding when the audience laughs and they kind of get the idea that this is a clever set, that the whole thing unfolds, it has a real pop-up book look to it. Uh, and so, that's the reward, you know, uh, is to is to see and hear audiences react to to the scenery. And then uh, I gotta talk a little bit about the costumes. The costumes in this show were all completely built from the ground up, uh, and so my small part, of course, ha had to do with the dress rig. But uh, but our costumer Emily Kimball again knocks it out of the park. Makes fairy wings. Makes fairy costumes. The, the lords, the peers, all of the people get uh, get uh, basically fresh builds. So this is a, a, a really fun costume show as well. Bethany is a small school, but we're committed to creativity. And what I really love too is that this little area where we have our pit orchestra, I think, I think, if not all, most of the uh, pit orchestra is comprised of people who are also acting on stage. So when they're not on stage, they're going back and they're playing the bass or they're playing the trumpet or the flute or the violin. Um, even some of the leads are back there playing instruments. So they're doing double duty and people don't get to see that unless they can actually peek uh, into the wings and see the the, uh, the band playing. And I love that too. So we're making it happen. I feel like we're bouncing back from COVID uh, and Iolanthe has uh, been a really fun show to work on. So there it is, the backstage tour of Iolanthe. Uh, really a fun, creative endeavor. Creativity is awesome. It's a creative life. And if you guys think so too, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, my name's Pete. We'll see you later.